Chapter 8, Part 2 of Granny Buys a Truck On her way home, she spied Silver Moon Annabelle with a small sack on her shoulder, a head on the path. Silver Moon was a pine straight, well-favored girl, but painfully shy. Her dress was out of a rag bag, her legs dust caked. Wonder who gave her the corn in that poke, thought Granny, her mind darting to the steep, untilled acres of the Annabelle farm. Lake Yaki probably milled it for her for nothing. She felt a surge of pity for Silver Moon, who should have a choice of true loves by this time. The laden girl paused to shift the tote, and Granny caught up. Morning, Silver Moon. Going to the dance party at the schoolhouse a week from Saturday? Silver Moon stood silent. She slowly blushed. Granny could have bitten her tongue. Of course the girl wasn't going. She lacked decent dress and any shoes whatever. Granny hurried to repair the slip. If you'll stop at my house, I've a bit of goods that I've wondered what on earth to do with. Just caught in print, but kind of pretty. Your ma and you would know what to make with it. And will you help me with this old pair of shoes off my feet? They're too narrow. I declare they're worse than rheumatic. And by Beckett has fixed my others. Try them on, won't you? What fun if they fit your foot. Silver Moon sat down on her bag of meal and tried the shoes. They were just right. What relief to get my swole feet out of them, said Granny. Silver Moon, dear, you must go to the party. Beach Trevitt will be there, and Cord and North Cornet, and Lazarus Pulaski. At the last name, the flush coursed over Silver Moon, brow and cheek, and down into the raggedy neck of her gown. Oh ho, perceived Granny. Well, come and get the goods. They crossed her woodlot, moving around a couple of dropped oak limbs and threaded her strawberry patch. I wish, child, you'd tell your pa and brothers to come and help themselves to firewood. It's litter in my place. And you must all take strawberries. I don't know what to do with such a crop. Granny hated waste. Silver Moon thanked her for the goods and shoes. Granny watched her cross the foot log and move spiritedly with a sack and bundle up the mountain. So, she reflected, it's Ladislas Palatsky who touches fire to Silver Moon's throat and temples. A fine young man, a bright, pleasant girl. Some hours after, Felt and Annabelle showed up at Granny's place with a mule and a slide. Felt was nearly old enough to be a voter and twice as big as some. He yoo-hooed for Granny who came to the door, flour on her cheeks and dough on her hands. My sister says there's firewood. Where's it at? In the woodlot, Felt. All about under the trees. It ain't cut. Cut. Do I look like a wood chopper? Besides, you people have my axe. What about the strawberries? Go right over and help yourself. Land a cane and couldn't he smell? They ain't picked. Granny felt her gorge rise and it tasted salty. Felt Annabelle. If you think I'm going to stoop and pick strawberries for you, you're touched by the sun. You go do your own harvesting, or I'll take my broom to you. She began to get really mad. Such notions. Felt leaned against his mule and considered. Pa says he's grown tired of trying to find a living in this country. Cass Peeler writes that, that where he and his family have settled, the county agent brings them free oranges. He sure has Pa wanting to dig out for the West. Granny felt a malicious satisfaction bubble in her chest. Well, Felt... You tell your pa to pray hard, and who knows, he might get his chance. As Felt turned his slide around, you aren't picking up the wood? My back's been hurting lately, said Felt. Granny clamped her chin. The immense, if staggering, idea that had leaped to her mind when she talked to Bide was certainly the first business of the hollow. She was now sure of that. It's extraordinary what, what can be done when a body stirred up to it. Granny spoke to 20 people, and there were Bide's seven dollars raised. Amos Toller joyfully put in two. Others chipped in from 25 cents up, vowing it would be worth the money just to see a fire started under Tuck. As soon as Bide could ready the truck, it set forth with iron cough and rattle for Toller's store. 
Its bed was spanned with hickory boughs and a cloth top like a covered wagon of old. On the canvas, Bide had splashed, Ho for the West, with a setting sun. The tumult of the truck's short journey brought everybody running. To all questions, Bide had answers ready. No, the truck wasn't for sale, but it could be had by any man in the hollow that wanted it bad enough under the conditions that would be made known tomorrow. The Annabelle stood about the outfit as if rooted. Said storekeeper Toller to Granny, if honing up Tuck's hanker is the idea, it's working. But why not just give him the truck and one last sack of flour and be shut of him? Granny shook her head. No, Amos. If Bide was that sure it would climb out of the hollow, he wouldn't have sold it. What we're hoping to do with Tuck Leech Annabelle and most of his family is hot them up and make them over into something useful, same as Bide does with a faulty horseshoe. We've got Tuck in the deep red coals, and now we'll blow the bellers on him. You know your part? I've been revolving the words. The following morning, a placard hung on the truck. It said, Grand Prize, Cat Track Hollow Knack and Talent Fair. This rig, free, free, free. Mitt and Annabelle heard somebody spell out the sign and took off for home. Felton and Tuckaleach sloped down the trail as soon as they got the news, stretching legs as though to a fire bell. Pushing through the crowd about the truck, Tuck strode into the store. Granny was there to see. Tuck demanded of storekeeper Toller. What does that sign mean? Well, Tuck, there's going to be a contest of slights and skills next Saturday at the meeting grounds. We're looking for a chairman that'll help us draw up the rules. You mean to set up tests and what this and that man can do? Amos nodded. Man, woman, or child, family winning most pints, take the truck. Does the winner also get lessons at driving that thing? He does, and five gallons of gasoline. Extra compliments of Bide Beckett. I offer to be chairman, yelled Tuckaleach. For the rest of the week, the truck stood on show in front of the store. Then it creaked and rumbled to the revival grounds, half the hollow following. Tucker Annabelle, who'd worked up a list of events, sat at the wheel and Bide showed him how to steer and work the horn and pedals as if he were already the winner. The ragged tires seemed straining to be off and away over plain and desert and distant mountain, eager for the promised land whose sun looked to Granny like a big pumpkin pie in the sky. Tuck made a sweeping turn, blasted on the beeper, headed for the creek, swerved in time, and brought up with a solid jar against a sycamore. It was a never-to-be-forgotten day.